Hey everyone, how's it going? So today we're going to continue with our evolution series, mini-series I should say, and we're going to try and see if Flareon can beat Jolteon's 4-hour, 3-minute time. Can one of the evolutions beat the 4-hour time? A lot of you seem to think Flareon will be the worst, but Flareon does have some advantages that will help speed it up. For one, its base 130 attack is one of the best in the entire generation, and its special of 110 is nothing to scoff at either. That being said, I can see why some of you are skeptical. Its move pool is not good. Flareon can only learn normal and fire damaging moves, and doesn't get a fire damaging move better than Ember until around Blaine. So that's going to be an issue, but that's an issue for later Jeros. For current Jeros, let's just say that Brock really ends up saving a ton of time, maybe enough to allow Flareon to be faster than Jolteon. Remember, Jolteon needed to be at level 12. Well, for Flareon, I tried battling Brock at level 6, which is as early as I possibly can battle him. This battle, I wasn't intending on winning. I actually just wanted to see how bad it would go. It didn't go that bad. In fact, if I used Sand Attack and tried a few more times, I probably could have won, but I didn't think it was worth the time investment. I decided instead to quickly battle the two extra bug catchers. I mean, I have Ember, so they'll go pretty quickly. And battling Brock at level 9, it really is too easy. While Ember is not very effective, the fact it's a special move, it does enough damage that when you combine it with the Sand Attack, Geodude and Onyx just cannot really deal much damage to me. And so, as we enter Mount Moon, we're at 23 minutes, a very respectable time for Flareon, 48 was required for Jolteon, so we're 25 minutes ahead. That is a massive lead. However, will Flareon's shortcomings allow Jolteon to start gaining time? Well, Rival 2 definitely is going to be more challenging. I mean, Jolteon both outsped Pidgeotto and had an electric move, and that makes a massive difference as Pidgeotto goes from a simple one-hit KO to a four-hit KO, and you saw that first critical hit. Half my health pretty much already gone after one hit. 3 HP to deal with the rest of the rival's Pokemon? Yeah, that didn't end up working out for me. That said, the second battle starts much better. I get a Sand Attack fail and a crit from Flareon's Ember. I then get only two attacks from Pidgeotto, none of which crit. And more importantly, no Sand Attacks. So I have half my HP for the final Pokemon. Abra is never an issue. Rattata can be, since it's a 2-hit KO, and I don't want to see Hyper Fang. I went for Quick Attack, since Rattata also has it, and I was hoping to get a critical hit like I got and knock it out in one hit. Unfortunately, wrong play. It didn't use Quick Attack. Whatever. I knock it out without taking any damage. And then Squirtle, I just need it not to use its water moves too much. Quick Attack is going to deal more damage, so I get a Tackle, a Tackle, and a Tail Whip. It's close, and definitely some luck was needed, but we did get the victory. Now that it's over, we're gonna get access to probably Flareon's best move for the bulk of the game, Body Slam. And that's not an exaggeration. Even though Ember is same type, because Flareon has better attack, and Body Slam is more than double the base power of Ember, unless Ember would be super effective, Body Slam is almost always gonna be the superior move, plus, there is that basically 1 in 3 chance of paralysis, and having hyped up the move so much, let's see how it affects Rival 3's battle. Body Slam nearly knocks out Pidgeotto in one hit, that's pretty good. Sand Attack is pretty bad, and then Quick Attack, I probably should have gone for Quick Attack to be honest, but I knock out the Pidgeotto, Raticate gets eradicated by a Body Slam, uh, uh. Anyway, Kadabra does outspeed me. Once again, Flareon's inferior speed is coming into play, but he used Teleport, so not a big deal. Then Body Slam does over half the War Turtle. Bubble does nothing. I mean, it does lower my speed, so I get hit by Water Gun, but so long as I don't miss, I should be fine. Okay, this is fine. Oh my gosh. Oh my... Oh! Hey! <laughs> yes! One HP victory! That's what we like to see! Wow, that was interesting. Um, okay, that happened. And we have beaten rival number three, but that definitely could have gone badly. And usually this is where I go battle Lieutenant Surge, but we can't use the HM for cut until we've beaten Misty, and we can't really do anything else, so time to battle Misty. 
Well, Body Slam makes quick work of Staryu, but of course, Starmie is the one I'm worried about. Starmie does outspeed. It goes for Bubble Beam, and it's just doing over half, like literally 1 HP over half. But so is Body Slam. So long as it doesn't use Bubble Beam, I'll win. And Bubble Beam, yeah. All right, let's try that again. All right, Staryu still won a KO. Water Gun, very good. That does way less. Still good damage from Body Slam. And X Defend. Oh my gosh, I came close to knocking it out. And hey, Quick Attack, one of the last times you'll see me using it. But pretty clutch. Starmie has a decent critical hit chance. So don't have to worry about that. Misty only took two attempts. And so even though on paper, Flareon looked to be pretty bad against both Brock and Misty, in reality, really wasn't the case, now was it? And while we could battle Lieutenant Surge, it is actually quicker to go right to Celadon. But before we get there, we do have that very annoying hiker with the two Geodudes and the Graveler. This time around, we're both going to use one Sand Attack and we're going to use Ember. The Sand Attack is just in case they use Self Destruct because if I get hit with more than one, I'll lose. And the Ember is because... Well, sometimes they don't like to self-destruct, and it doesn't take that long to knock them out. It only took a few attempts, too. And you'll notice I'm poisoned. Unfortunately, that was from the junior trainer before, and I didn't have an antidote. And I wanted to avoid going back to the Pokemon Center, but I had to use Dig and do so. So that cost a tiny bit of time. Very annoying. But now we're through to Celadon. And since we're in Celadon, what we're going to do first is Erica. This time, it's pretty obvious why. I am the Fire-type Pokemon. So even though Ember is definitely not going to be a 1 KO, her moves are going to do next to nothing against me. So I go for Ember against Victory Bell, and it's not even doing half. That's actually very disappointing. It goes for Poison Powder. Not ideal, but better than Wrap. I go for Body Slam out of curiosity. It's doing, I think, the same amount as Ember, maybe even a little less. And wow, thank goodness it missed with that Wrap. Wrap plus Poison, probably the only way I could lose. Ember critical hits Tangela, which can't do very much to me anyway. And now Vileplume, I'm hoping, will be a 2 at KO. I go for Body Slam, hoping for the Paralysis. I don't get one, it goes for Mega Drain. Okay, we're good. And, hey, we're really good. Critical hit. So it would have been a 3 at KO. Didn't matter. Flareon has easily dispatched Erica, And now we can actually backtrack and battle Lieutenant Surge. So let's do that really quickly. And we have one Body Slam... Two Body Slams, Raichu outspeeds and Growl misses. Three Body Slams, just fails to knock it out. And I still actually have Quick Attack, so might as well use it. And that is four Gym Badges. None of them have been that big an issue. And in fact, I'm so confident in Flareon how it's done so far. I'm going to go right back to Celadon, finish up, and that means battling Giovanni. All right, the first Ember does about half. Rock Throw, I don't want to see. Can't you use a Guard Spec? Anyway, two hit KO with Ember, pretty good. All right, it's not doing quite as much damage to Rhyhorn. Horn attack, again, can you use a guard spec? Yep, not a two hit KO and 15 HP for Kangaskhan. We're gonna need a critical hit or something. And Kangaskhan, of course, outspeeds. Rage was what I wanted to see. If I had more health, this would be great, but I don't, so I lose. So I basically need this exact same battle, just no rock throw from Onyx and maybe less attacks from Rhyhorn. We should be great. And yes, I realize I'm not at full HP, I don't have any potions left, and if I went to get one, it would waste time, and I think I don't need all my HP. Anyway, still doing about half, guard spec is what I want to see, and... No, it doesn't knock it out in rock throw, but thankfully it's burned, and that does knock it out, so it was pretty close. And now I'm going to use, oh, a crit, that was good, horn attack, whatever. Okay, 35 HP for Kangaskhan should be more than enough, and rage, that's what I wanted to see, body slam... And guard spec and crits. There we go. And now we can move on to rival number four. I'm really not concerned too much about this battle. And that's one body slam for Pidgeotto. How the mighty have fallen. Growlithe also. And execute one KO with Ember. Kadabra I outspeed and one KO. And almost War Turtle. Bubble does nothing. Pretty, pretty good. So Flareon definitely is starting to come into its own a little bit. But this is usually the part of the run where it can either go pretty good or pretty bad. And so after finishing up here, I think what makes sense is to battle Koga next. Neither option seems particularly easy, but I think Koga might be a bit of an easier time. All right, so I go for Body Slam. It's doing about half. That's good. Coughing sets up X Attack. That's very good. And I was curious how much Ember would do. 
it's less than half, so Body Slam is better. Anyway, that is one down, but that's a lot of HP to lose to coughing. I decide to teach Tail Whip, thinking that would be a good plan. Muck poisons me with poison gas, and of course I get a crit, rendering that Tail Whip a total waste of time. X attack though works, so this is decent HP for two Pokemon remaining. A critical hit body slam though would be super clutch. We don't get it, but we do get a smoke screen miss. 25% chance that status moves that affect me can miss, which is pretty cool. So we have a bunch of HP for wheezing, but how much damage will we do? I opt to go for reflect, thinking maybe it goes for self-destruct and I can survive if I use reflect. It goes for smog and misses. Body Slam does, wow, that does nothing, like less than a quarter and self-destruct, yeah, I don't think that reflect really mattered at my HP. So okay, that didn't go too well. And the next battle pretty much followed the same formula. I mean, of course it wasn't identical, but we do make it to Weezing with actually way more HP. And yet the Weezing finds a way to whittle down my HP before it goes for self-destruct and completely annihilates me. In this case, after two X attacks. So basically, I need Weezing not to use self-destruct and I win. And in my third battle, after making it through coughing number one, followed by Muck, and of course, followed by coughing number two. So we're at 85 HP and it goes for Sludge, dealing a bunch of damage, but then goes for Smog on every single attack. And while I am poisoned and Smog does hit every time, which is pretty unlikely, it is a 70% chance, we are able to slowly but surely knock out Weezing. And I would consider this a little bit of good luck on my part. I mean, it could have gone for self-destruct at any point, basically a one in four chance, but thankfully it didn't. And so we can make our way to Sylph Company and battle rival Fievel. This shouldn't be awful, but it definitely will be harder than rival number four. All right, well, we outspeed Pidgeot, which is excellent. And critical hit, even more excellent, Sand Attack, less excellent. That might be an issue later. Well, we don't miss against Growlithe, and we knock it out in one hit, very good. We don't miss against Execute, and it uses Reflect, that's good. And we don't miss again, alright, so far so good. But now we have to knock out the Alakazam, which I believe should outspeed us at our level. It does, but that does way less damage than I was expecting, and we do, well, what I was expecting, a lot of damage. So we have half HP for Blastoise. Blastoise's two water moves are Bubble and Water Gun. Very weird, I know, but they only use level up moves in this game. And those are the only level up moves that Blastoise will get, water type at least, until Hydro Pump. Kind of weird. So we get a Body Slam. Bubble, perfect, I want to see that. Body Slam again, Paralyzed, now Bubble again. Oh, Withdraw. Rival Fievel is good AI, withdraws a water move, so he'll use one of the three available water moves. That's pretty bad because I won't knock it out. No, I don't. And, of course, he goes for Water Gun. But that's okay, I'll just use Quick Attack to... Oh, come on. Alright, Body Slam, please hit. Oh, come on! <laughs> okay, at least it's fully paralyzed. Alright, are you gonna hit this time? Yes! Okay! This has been an interesting run so far, but now it's time to face Giovanni number two. And I don't think Giovanni number two should be too difficult either. Unfortunately, once again, I have to enter a major battle poisoned. The Drowsy used poison gas. Of course it did. And yes, I can heal, but that would waste time to backtrack. So we're going to try and do this while poisoned, but we are at full health. So Nidorino, I'm not too worried about Body Slam. Poison Sting. Let's just say that would have poisoned me right there. And Body Slam again. Okay, 96 for the final three. That's fine. All right, against Kangaskhan, does about half. Tail Whip actually will boost my attack. Shout out to the badge boost glitch. Gen 1 is weird, and yes, we'll knock out Kangaskhan. But our defense is still lowered, so after I use Ember, it's doing very little damage. And Stomp does a lot. And I'm not doing enough damage, and Poison, and Stomp, and oh. Well, that stinks. Well, guess what? There's a really easy way to avoid what just happened. I can set up a Reflect against Nidorino. So let's just quickly get rid of Nidorino again. The crit against Kangaskhan is pretty clutch because now we have two body slams left for Nidoqueen and 90 HP for Rhyhorn is pretty good. And while I won't get a critical hit, I am only hit with a single horn attack. However, I am hit with two tail whips. Hopefully I can get a crit or something or body slam will do way more than I think it's going to. And that's doing about half. Body Slam's doing a bunch, and okay, that was doing half because it's two a KO. Pretty good. So, it's rare Giovanni gives me more trouble than Rival Fievel, but this has been a strange run so far. 
Anyway, we're about to battle Blaine. I'm hoping as the fire type gym leader, he's gonna be easy, but there's only one way to find out. Well, I don't knock out Growlithe in a single hit, but Retroactive Super Potion is excellent because it never attacks and I knock it out. Ponyta also not a 1 in KO, and it goes for Growl. That is the worst thing. The absolute worst thing. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that could cost me the battle because now I'm gonna be doing way less damage. All right, well, Ponyta's done. Rapidash, I'm doing about a third, so it's probably a 2 in KO without Growl, and... Of course, another Growl. Perfect. And after another Body Slam, Super Potion. Wow. All right, this is not going well for me. All right, let's do it again. And another Super Potion. Why not? I'm curious if Ember now would do more damage because of those attack drops. And no, it's clearly doing less. At least Rabbit Ash can't attack. Body Slam. All right, making progress. And okay, Critical Hit Stomp. Why not? And we knock it. Oh, come on. Well, at least use Tail Whip. But yeah, hopefully we get a crit against our canine or this is not going to go well for me. All right, body slam roar, body slam super potion. Oh, come on, not it. Come on. I'm going to run out of body slams and yep, I've run out of body slams. Hooray, I've got to resort to quick attack and you know, eventually it's going to hit me with takedown and okay. All right, can we try this again and maybe not get a growl from Ponyta, that would be, that would just be swell. And you know what, after hitting Growlithe with the first body slam, I'm gonna set up Reflect. I do take damage, so that's annoying, but while I'm at 98 HP, I have a Reflect set up, so Stomp won't be as big a concern. All right, just no growl. Actually, it's really close to knocking out, and of course, oh, okay. All right, well, 25% chance that it fails. So we're good, and we're at 98 HP for Rapid Ash. Will it be a 2 hit KO? Well, you can see the badge boost glitch in action since I'm no longer outspeeding the Rapid Ash. The Growl's actually sped me up. So it goes for Stomp, it does like nothing, and I paralyze it. So I'm going to outspeed and knock out the Rapid Ash. And now I just need somewhat decent luck against Arcanine. With Reflect, I should be good. And first turn Super Potion, love that. And it's looking to be about a 3 hit KO, maybe 4? Well, definitely at least 4 with that Super Potion, but... Hey, we paralyzed it. That's kind of nice. All right, please don't heal. Roar is good. And hey, we did it. So this could have been an easy battle. If the first Ponyta could have just been a Bronita. Instead, it was, I don't know, whatever the opposite of a bro is. Anyway, we're ready to take on Sabrina. I mean, it's not like we have anything else to do. All right, well, we do outspeed Kadabra and knock it out in one hit. That's good. And we outspeed Mr. Mime. We don't knock it out, but Barrier is fine. And finally, we can use Fire Blast. I'm so happy to see you. Bye-bye, Venomoth. One more Pokemon to go. We're not going to outspeed Alakazam. But even if it uses Reflect, they should be fine. Well, it goes for Psy Wave. That's great. And almost knock it out. And even though I deleted it in an unsuccessful battle and have been planning to get rid of it, we still have Quick Attack. So we win. That is seven Gym Leaders. And with Fire Blast, the 8th, Giovanni number 3, should be a heck of a lot easier. And by the way, we're still maintaining a roughly 20-minute lead on Jolteon. We really haven't hemorrhaged much time at all. So, if we can get a decent Giovanni fight, yeah, it looks like we're going to break the sub-4-hour barrier. We're going to smash the sub-4-hour barrier. But there's a bunch of difficult battles in the way. Let's see how this one went. All right, how much does Fire Blast do to Rhyhorn? Everything! Okay, there was a crit. But that feels great. Thank you, Fire Blast, though. It is so nice to actually have a good Fire-type move. But now I'm going to be outsped by Doug Trio, And you know what? I should have gone for Reflect. And I can go for it now, but that's probably the wrong move. I'm planning to reset anyway. Oh, Guard Spec. Well, at least we can make it to Nido Queen. And let's see how much Fire Blast does. Wow, that does great damage. Man, this is nice. And, <laughs> okay, critical hit scratch. Don't think I've ever lost to a critical hit scratch before, but I think we can try this again and do much better. All right, first things first, Rhyhorn really can't do much, so I'm gonna just set up the reflect here. He goes for Tail Whip, and now Fire Blast doesn't quite knock it out, even with that badge boost. So the critical hit definitely mattered. Still, that's great damage. And I still have Quick Attack, we still have it. So if I get a critical hit, I think I'll knock out Doug Trio. Don't get it. It goes for Dig, and okay, that's fine. I can knock it out with Body Slam. Fire Blast can do way more damage than Body Slam, and Tail Whip works fine. I can use Body Slam because it's 100% accurate and knock out Nidoqueen. 
All right, after that Tail Whip, will I knock out Nido King? <laughs> so close, and the burn. I like that guard spec. Maybe the burn will knock it out. Not quite. Very close. All right, one more to go. Rhydon should just use Fissure, so I think this is a guaranteed victory. I level up, so no more badge boost, and it still does half. Excellent. That looks really good for the final rival battle. And as I suspected, the good AI is just going to use Fissure, which can't hit me because I'm faster. So we have beaten Giovanni. Again, I wouldn't say easy, but not that difficult. But here's where the game is going to take a turn. Because Flareon isn't that fast. We're under level. And the Blastoise is no longer going to be using Bubble. There are actual Pokemon with actual attacks that can actually deal significant damage. And we haven't really had that yet. So how is Flareon going to hold up? First things first, Rival 6. All right, we outspeed Pidgeot, and hey, okay, because of a crit, but we knock it out in one hit. That's excellent. I'm going to set up Reflect versus Rhyhorn. It uses Fury Attack, and it hits once. Oh, come on. All five times, really? All right, well, at least this will do great. Hey, really great damage. Another crit. Okay. Only 12% chance, or 12 and a half or something, but I'll take it. Let's make it three for three. <laughs> okay. All right, this is going great. Now, as long as we don't miss, this should be four one-hit KOs in a row, and it is! All right, now we just have Alakazam and Blastoise. Full health recover, and <laughs> what is this? Five critical hits, holy moly! This is insane! Can we make it six? No, and that does about a quarter. Withdraw is fine, maybe I should go for Fire Blast? Yeah, okay, that's doing a little bit more than Body Slam actually was before, good to know. And thank goodness Hydro Pump misses. We could win right now. I don't think Fire Blast is going to knock it out. So I'm going to go for the safe play and Body Slam. All right, just don't hit with no, no. Aw, all that luck for nothing. And unfortunately, that was the closest I would come to knocking out the Blastoise. Yes, I tried this about four more times. And in fact, making it to Blastoise was something I struggled to do. In fact, in one of the attempts, I didn't even make it to the Alakazam. And so what's going on? Well, those 1 KOs kinda were really big. Because none of those Pokemon are 1 KO. And they can all deal pretty decent damage. But probably the biggest hurdle was Alakazam, since I'm not outspeeding. And once it sets up Reflect, it just takes too long. And it can use Psychic or Psybeam. And I would just lose, well, again and again. But... I recognized that the first run was kind of an aberration, and that if I wanted to win, it was time to use my rare candies. I typically like to save them till as late as possible. Well, this seems like the time that they're needed. Let's use them all, level up a bunch, and let's try again, see what it looks like now. All right, well, Fire Blast won a KO without the crit? I don't know, because I missed. Great. And agility, so it's going to go first. Excellent. Okay, another agility I can work with, and all right, that's great. One down. Once again, I'll go for Reflect, Horn Drill I like to see. Another one at KO. This is why we level up. Look at that consistency. Two one at KOs, no crits needed. Can we make it three? Yes, we can. And so long as we don't miss to execute, which we don't, that is four for four. Now, will I outspeed Alakazam? That would be huge. I don't, I'm hit by Psychic, no special drop at least, but 106 HP for Blastoise. Ooh, it's cutting it close. All right, let's get a crit or something. Withdraw, I want to see. You know what, I probably should switch to Fire Blast, but maybe I'll get Paralysis. All right, you know what, switch to Fire Blast. I know there's a 15% chance to miss, but we don't, and yes! Okay, kind of lucky we didn't see Hydro Pump though. Nonetheless, I'm very happy with the rare candies. That was a far more consistent battle, but far from what I want to see. Not outspeeding Alakazam, having to rely on Fire Blast versus Blastoise. You know, going to the Elite Four, these are things that are raising some major red flags. Now, I probably should address why I reset and am battling Rival 6 again. No, it's not to get a faster time. I accidentally deleted Fire Blast, and I'm going to need it for the Elite Four. So unfortunately, I have to battle Rival 6 again, but at least I know it's consistent. Still on pace after all this to beat Jolteon by 20 minutes. Looks like a lot of you were wrong, but easier said than done. Laurelie battle, take one.
thankfully dugong doesn't actually have a water attack so i go for fire blast that's doing really nice damage the burn doesn't really matter it does negate some of that takedown damage. Oh, and I should mention the not very effective message is an error in Generation 1. When a move is super effective against one type and not very effective against the other, there's a priority system. And because water takes priority over ice, it displays the not very effective message. Don't worry, it's still doing neutral damage. I might be able to knock out Cloyster in a single hit. I click too fast, go for Flamethrower again, and even that almost knocked it out. It goes for a Retroactive Super Potion, so Cloyster, which actually has a water attack, Clamp, never uses it. Now, Slowbro could be difficult because it does have a water attack, but that's Water Gun. And it also has Withdraw, so it's just going to alternate between the two of them. I was curious how much Body Slam would do. It doesn't actually do all that great, but I get a critical hit. Not sure why I didn't switch to Flamethrower to see how much that would do. But that knocks out Slowbro. Now, all I have to deal with is Jinx. And yeah, I mean, it did outspeed, but that wasn't a big deal. Now, Lapras, though, has Hydro Pump, so I'm not sure how much that will do. Well, Fire Blast did half, and Hydro Pump misses. You know what? There is a better strategy for this I just thought about. If we lose, or when we lose, maybe, we'll do that. Bruno, I don't think this will be too tough. I really think this is going to be pretty easy. All right, Fire Blast on the Onyx. Yep, 1 at KO. Flamethrower, 1 at KO. That's going to 1 at KO Hitmonlee. Another 1 at KO, and Machamp. No, not quite. Still, we don't take any damage, and we've made it to Agatha relatively safely. I mean, Lorelei, I possibly could have lost, but like I said, do have a plan for that. So, Agatha is scary. I'm slow. My best move misses 15% of the time. And I have no way to speed myself up. I can't even badge boost. So, hopefully this goes better than I think it's going to. All right, Nightshade, well, that does exactly 56, and Fire Blast misses, of course. Dream Eater is good, and it hits. Okay, so Fire Blast, a 2 KO, maybe even Flamethrower would be. That would be nice. And now I'm asleep. Beautiful. And, oh, there's the Nightshade. And the Confuse Ray. Okay, really liking that Confuse Ray, and I'm not waking up, and there's Dream Eater, and oh, okay. Well, that was quick. Yeah, that's pretty much how this battle goes, like, every single time. And in recent videos, you're used to me showing several Elite Four attempts as I sort of build towards the eventual victory. But this time was a little different. Because, aside from Lorelei, where I'm going to overwrite Reflect that I really don't need, I mean, there aren't really any Pokémon that I'm too worried about, and I'm going to teach Mimic. With Mimic... I'm able to mimic Slowbro's Amnesia, which does two things. One, I outspeed the Jinx. And two, I can 1 to KO the Lapras. And even if I don't, the Lapras will do next to nothing unless it gets a critical hit. In fact, I would only lose to Lorelei one single time since I implemented the strategy, and that was due to very bad luck. So Lorelei's not a problem. Bruno's not a problem. But the Agatha Lottery just wasn't working. I mean... I could make it past the first Gengar sometimes, but the issue really is this. It's a 2 at KO, and it goes first. That means Gengar has at least two opportunities to do something. Whether that's confuse me, put me to sleep, or heck, even whittle down my health with Nightshade. This, it just wasn't working. And that's a problem. Because if we look at Flareon's moveset, there's nothing more I can really do. Like I said, there's nothing to speed me up. No agility. Heck, even something like Harden would badge boost me and allow me to go quicker. And in fact, I was close. But I'd need to level up more and I've already used all my rare candies. And there are a couple I left that are kind of inconvenient to get. And I do have 20 minutes to spare, so I might still beat Jolteon. However, before I did that, I got this battle versus Agatha. It goes for Nightshade, which isn't great. You can see I've switched to Flamethrower because it's 2 a KO. The burn really doesn't matter. Dream Eater was nice, so I knocked out the first Gengar. Golbat, Fire Blast, when it KOs, and it's nice that it hit. Haunter, it does not. However, I got a critical hit. So, that was good, and now we only have two Pokemon left. Now, I don't think Arbok is a one it KO either, but another critical hit. And that's huge, because we're at 109 HP. That still amounts to two Nightshades, but at least this Gengar can't put me to sleep. It can confuse me, however. Thankfully, I don't hit myself Confusion and hit the Fire Blast. 
and I'm thinking it does need another fire blast, although the burn is nice. But you know what? I want to be safe. Let's go for flamethrower and hope, and I hit myself in confusion. In this case, I think being safe will make me sorry. Let's go for fire blast. That's for sure going to knock it out, and I do. So, after four unsuccessful attempts, we finally make it to Lance. Wow, what a monumental accomplishment for Flareon. I'm so excited to be here as he sends out... Oh. Okay. Well... Yeah, this is going to be an issue. After all that, after all these attempts and trying my very hardest to make it through Agatha, Gyarados just absolutely destroys me. It's a three-hit KO with Body Slam. I don't think Fire Blast would be better in this case. And this is the reason I don't save between Elite Four members. I, of course, can make it through much quicker if I save, and then I just brute force my way through these battles. Two Hydro Pump misses isn't crazy, it's just unlikely. Beating Agatha isn't crazy, it's just kind of unlikely when I go second. But that's not what this challenge is about. I'm all about consistency and trying to find a way through these battles that doesn't rely on dumb luck or overleveling. However, the key word is overleveling. Clearly, I'm not at a high enough level. And at first, I tried some of the rare candies I hadn't used before. And the battle goes better. But the big reason is I get a critical hit with Body Slam and then a miss with Hydro Pump. The chance both those things happen? 3% if I did the math properly. So let's see what 3% odds look like. All right, Body Slam's doing half to Dragonair. Slam's not doing that much. So buy Dragonair 1. All right, still good damage, and oh no, a critical hit. I mean, I can't complain with the luck I got, but man, that's not making the most of this opportunity. And Aerodactyl's likely going to outspeed, and it can easily knock me out. Well, it goes for bite. High chance of critical hit. Doesn't get it. I go for Fire Blast, and I do get a critical hit. Wow. 28 HP for Dragonite. This is going to be interesting. All right, let's try for the Paralysis. Don't get it. Slam, I lose. And that is as far as I could get with just rare candies. And so I used a strategy you've seen in other videos. I start to battle the Elite Four again and again. I wouldn't use my PowerPoint restoring items or elixirs. I have won when doing this before, and that's a nice surprise. But I was not winning. I would get through Loralee, I'd get through Bruno, and just lose to Agatha again and again and again, fairly quickly. So I was able to quickly gain experience points without losing too much time. Nonetheless, these leveling up sessions were costing a ton of time, and it was getting to the point where it would be really tough just to tie Jolteon, let alone beat it. Finally, I decided I would try Agatha again at level 63, so I manipulate my experience points so I level up to level 61 right as I beat the Machamp, and now at level 63, something interesting and important happens. I outspeed Gengar. This is what I was waiting for. I was curious if Fire Blast would want to KO. You can see how much more damage is doing. Another added effect. Swaps into Golbat. Fire Blast hits by Golbat. Obviously, I'm going to use Flamethrower to knock out the Gengar. Will this be a 1 KO on Haunter? It is. No crit needed. And hopefully that's the same for Arbok. Yes, it is. This is massive. I'm at the final Gengar at maximum health, and it can only attack me a maximum of two times. It still outspeeds me, however, but it goes for Dream Eater. I go for Flamethrower. I want to see how much it would do. It looks like half. Toxic perfect. And that was clean. Of course, I'd like to outspeed both Gengars, but the first one with Hypnosis is far more important. But at this point, I'm not even worried about Agatha. I'm worried about Lance, specifically Gyarados. It has been the absolute run-ender. So now that I'm at level 63, will I be able to at least mount a better defense? Let's take a look. All right, I go for Body Slam. It's doing about half. Hydro Pump is also doing half. That's kind of nice. Can I knock it out? Come on. Come on. Oh, no. I'm going to have to level up more. That, that just it wasn't enough. I can't rely on these ranges, especially with how luck-based Agatha is. Man, you know, I'm trying again, obviously, because why not? Like, it's good to see whether I get unlucky. I've made that mistake before, specifically in the Pichu run, where I didn't try again, I changed my strategy in the end, I just got unlucky. 
So perhaps that was the case. Perhaps it was a range that Gyarados would knock me out in two hits, but I don't really think so. At this point, both Loralee and, of course, Bruno are very trivial. The question is whether I get decent luck against Agatha's first Gengar. If I do, Agatha's also kind of trivial. And so now that I know how much Fire Blast does, I can go for Flamethrower. It's going to be a 2 a KO or a crit, 1 a KO, and no crit. And that's what I want to see. Dream Eater. So as long as I don't miss... All right, well, she missed two, but if we get one, two, and three, now I just need a little bit of cooperation from Gengar 2, and I'm back at Lance right away. But Confuse Ray is the worst thing. That's what I don't want to see, and hit myself in confusion, of course, of course. Well, I'm already confused. So that's not going to work, and I hit. I just need to hit one more time. Dream Eater works, and good. So we're right back at Lance. Let's see if that Gyarados battle was unlucky or whether that's what I can expect in the future. If it's what I can expect, then I need a new strategy. All right, so Body Slam stills doing about half damage, but I get the paralysis and it doesn't move. Okay, this is great. Now, please knock it out. Come on, and of course, Hydro Bump. Oh my gosh, it missed. All right, all right, I really need this to work. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna mimic agility and try and badge boost. And I am gonna take some damage. Yep, Dragon Rage is probably the worst thing to see. But after finishing setting up, I have 115. Will this knock it out in one hit? Yes! Yes, it will. And I should outspeed everything. I just leveled up. All right, come on, come on, knock it out again. No, what is this one HP stuff? At least I burnt it, and Lance has Hyper Potions, not full restores. So if I hit again, this actually should guarantee knock it out. And it does. Good thing Fire Blast has like a 30% chance to burn. Or uh, that would have been really bad. But now I really need Aerodactyl to be a 1 at KO. All right, come on. No, not a miss. All right, it's not doing a lot. Come on. Not again. No! Wow. Just... Come on! Finally it hits and it's not a one at KO. And yeah, that's that's a little bit overdoing it, don't you think, Aerodactyl? <laughs> Critical hit hyper beam. Alright. Should I try one more time or should I level up more? I mean, listen, I'm already at a much higher level than Jolteon. The fact I'm saving time has more to do with Brock than anything else. I don't know. Alright, I'm gonna try one more time with the current strategy and i do want to note this as we're watching through some easy battles again i don't keep track of real time on the tier list because i'm not actually doing a speed run meaning i pause sometimes i get a phone call or something so the times can be impacted by stuff that have nothing to do with the pokemon and so giving an exact time would really i think be misleading that being said this elite four session has already taken more real-time combined than my previous three videos put together. Gengar, Alakazam, and Jolteon. So this has been really bad. The in-game time is a little bit misleading right now. And uh, we're back at Agatha. What move are we going to get from Gengar 1? Dream Eater is perfect. All right, that's one down. All right, I miss, and of course I'm confused, but hopefully I still hit three times in a row. Yes. Yes, and snapped out of confusion. Okay. And now, Toxic, I want to see that. And Critical Hit, I really want to see that. Okay. So we actually didn't take damage. I mean, we were poisoned, so it's not a perfect run, but... Okay. We're back at Lance. It's the moment of truth. If I can't figure out a new strategy with my existing moveset, then it's time to level up a little bit more. Probably until Aerodactyl can potentially be a 1 at KO. Anyway, let's do this again. All right, let's go for Body Slam and Crit Paralysis. I like that. Of course, Hydro Pump and... All right. Can't say we didn't get the luck here. The luck is on our side. Now the question is, will I be able to capitalize? Well, you know what? Flareon has great attack. Let's mimic Hyper Beam. We tried Agility. Let's try Hyper Beam and see how that goes. Oh my gosh, think Dratini heard me. <laughs> okay. The luck is now insane. We have to win this one. All right, knock it out. You know what? I deserve that. Dragon Rage, let's try it again. <laughs> this is just ridiculous. All right, slam. All right, come on, hits. Yes, all right. So it does knock it out. 
And in Generation 1 only, if you knock out a Pokemon with Hyper Beam, you don't have to recharge. All right, can we at least hit this one without missing? Good, that works fine. But you know what? This is probably a bad strategy because Hyper Beam is not going to want to KO Aerodactyl. And yeah, it's going to outspeed me now. It goes for takedown, and that does pretty decent damage. I go for flamethrower. That's okay. I mean, Fire Blast would have knocked it out, and that was consistent. Now it goes for Bite. Thankfully, no crit, so I do survive. But I'd already given up on the battle, so I went for Body Slam, and... No way! <laughs> I'm done! You know what? Hyper Beam, let's try it! <laughs> yes! Yes! This battle was insane! Oh my gosh! I mean, the combination of misses and then all the good luck I got. Wow! This is the first time I've made it to the champion, and I, <laughs> I don't know. You know, I don't know. I have no more words. This is probably going to be terrible, and we're going to have to level up, but you know what? At least I got to show off this craziness. First champion battle. Let's do it. All right, let's not mess around. Go for Fire Blast. Of course, it misses. Sky Attack? All right, so long as I hit and one hit KO, that miss shouldn't matter. All right, coolest animation in the game? Yes! Okay, that was huge! Sky Attack would have done tons of damage. One down. All right, no Psychic. Reflect isn't great. Do at least half. Okay, Paralysis would have been clutch, but I can take that. All right, I'm going to go for Fire Blast. Recover, I'm fine with. Fire Blast? That does a lot. Even with Recover, I should knock it out with Flamethrower. Psybeam, no confusion. Perfect. Great. Okay, that was one of the scariest Pokemon down. And we still have tons of HP for Blastoise. Okay, this shouldn't want to KO. It doesn't. Fury Attack, don't hit too many times. Three's not the worst. I'll use Flamethrower and knock it out. We're halfway done. All right, time for Body Slam. Paralysis. Roar. Okay, knock it out, knock it out. Yes, okay. All right, two left. Actually, really just one left. But hold on a minute. I could knock out Executor. Or, hear me out. What if we mimic Hypnosis? Because so long as it doesn't put me to sleep. Oh, it missed. I can knock it out. What am I doing? I misclicked. Okay, at least it hit. All right, not against Executor. I didn't mean to use it there. But if I put Blastoise to sleep, that could be the battle. Okay, it all comes down to this. Will I put Blastoise to sleep? Yes! <laughs> now it just needs to stay asleep. All right, one turn, it's asleep. I've learned my lesson. Fire Blast's probably going to do more damage. Yes, two turns asleep. Going to go for Flamethrower. And we won. We won! <laughs> yes! Yes! Wow! Holy moly, this... I don't even know what to say. You know? Some runs, you just never seem to find luck, and some, you just get really great luck. That Lance battle was nuts. Anyway, what was our final time? <laughs> Five minutes slower than Jolteon after all that. I mean, I'm not surprised it's slower, but it felt like 20, 30 minutes slower. And in reality, it probably could have been, since it takes so much longer to level up. And I probably would have had to to make it consistent, so... I'm really thinking about where to put Flareon, and the only spot that seems reasonable to me is actually below Ghastly. And my reasoning is twofold. One, it was at a higher level. Two, the amount of luck it took to beat Ghastly's time was astronomical. And you know what? Three, Ghastly was at minimum battles, unlike Flareon. So that's where I'm going to put it. So you guys ended up being right. It looked for a while like Flareon was going to beat Jolteon, but hey... Jolteon's better move pool and access to Thunderbolt ended up helping it out. That being said, how's Vaporeon, one of my favorite Pokemon, going to do? We'll have to tune in in a few days and find out. Thanks for watching. Take care.